Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of The Fabricator with yours truly. So I'm getting the bender all set up here right now. And we have a really great car coming in, and I'm going to show you how to build a custom harness bar. So as this video is about 30 minutes long, you might want to grab some uh, scratch paper or something to take some notes. We can, that way you don't have to keep on thumbing back and be like, oh, wait, what did he say? After the video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more really great videos. Also check out the Facebook page, facebook.com slash the fabricator series. And uh, check me out on Instagram at the.fabricator. Now check the comments below and I have all that information in there too. So without much further delay, here's how to build a harness bar. Well, we have our design in mind, so what do we start with? Well, we got to start to figure out where to hang the brackets at and how they're going to look. This car is actually easy enough that underneath the uh, B-pillar covers right here, we have our seat belt mounting location, and that's exactly where we're going to take off with the brackets. Easy enough. So not every car is going to be like that. Not every car is going to be easy. Some of them don't have seat belt mounting points in the B-pillars themselves. So you, what you usually got to do is take the B-pillar cover off, find a mounting location, which there's usually a hole or two or a threaded spot, or you're going to have to add one, and then cut through your B-pillar plastics accordingly to, to, uh, to mount them. So on this one, it's easy enough. We're going to take this off of here, get rid of the seat belts, and then we're going to fabricate our brackets. All right, got the seat belt out. We got the plastic separator. Let's get to work making a bracket. All right, so to make the brackets, this is going to have to happen a couple of times. We're going to have to put the plastics back on and off. You need to make sure that they're fit dead on according to where they're supposed to be from the factory. So as in when it's all back and get assembled correctly, that it fits exactly where it's supposed to be because any deviation from that is probably going to make your harness bar not fit correctly or your brackets rub or you know tear into the plastics, which is really not what you want. You want to build something high quality and uh, correct fitment. So make sure, even though it's a pain in the butt, mount it all back in there correctly, exactly where it needs to be, as if it was never taken apart to begin with. So our hole for mounting is actually hidden up in between or underneath the plastic here. So what we need to do is make sure that when we bend the bracket, it comes out and lands between the upper portion and the bottom portion of this opening. And we want it pretty much dead in between. Okay. Now the other thing we need to note is where it's going to come out and at which angle. So I've already measured this up before and we'll you know, run over this again here, but I want the harness bar to be completely uh, parallel to the B-pillar or at least very close to it. We'll have a little bit of swing room on it, but once it's mounted in place and set according to the correct angle and whatnot with the harness is mounted to it, you know, I mean, it's it never needs to swing anyway. So to make sure that we get it right in between where we need to be just take a marker and trace out the bottom line and then trace out the top so when we take this off again we'll measure and find out where the center of that is next we need to cut a spacer and the reason why we need to cut a spacer is to pour it off of the sheet metal and if it was attached to the sheet metal you wouldn't be able to swing it or anything like that because of all the stamping and everything else like that that goes into it not to mention if we use the same hardware or the OEM hardware it has a swivel on it either way so we need to make sure that we have enough space to bring the bracket off of the sheet metal and still have the swivel ability to use the OEM hardware and adjust the harness bar accordingly so in order to find out how much depth we have or how far off of the sheet metal we can take it we just take the tape measure and measure from the sheet metal itself to the inside of the plastics it looks like we have one inch so we know right off the get-go that you know take half of that the brackets gonna have a standoff from the sheet metal of about a half an inch so we'll measure the OEM hardware and confirm that and then you know cut our spacer in a minute so now that we have the markings we have our depth measurement for the standoff we can pull the plastics back off and we'll get the last couple of measurements the next measurement we need is the center of this opening to the center of this bolt hole. That's what we need to figure out right now. So measure from the bottom mark to the top mark. Looks like we have an opening gap of one inch. So I'm gonna measure from the bottom line here to the center of this line and then we're gonna subtract half an inch because half an inch is half the distance between this opening here. So to make it easy, 
looks like two inches exactly. So that's gonna be really easy to make this bracket. So an inch and a half after we subtract the uh, half inch opening here, we know that the bracket needs to be the upper portion of the bracket before the bend needs to be about two inches tall. Now here's another little kicker that we have here is it may be hard to notice in this video, but the B pillar is not actually dead on even. It bends back a little bit, it bends inward. So we need to know what that angle is. And it looks like it's sitting at 70 degrees. So that's 30 from, from being vertical or from, from perpendicular to the ground. So with those measurements in mind, we can go out and build a bracket, right? So now for the brackets. we just use nothing more than some cleaned up inch and a half, 120 flat stock. Easy stuff to work with, easy to bend, drill, weld to, whatever the case is. And it's plenty strong enough to, uh, to make harness bar components and whatnot out of. So we need to know, we're gonna start from basically the bolt hole and go down. We already have our standoff OD of three quarters of an inch, so we're gonna have to cut a three quarter inch hole into this. So to leave additional room for welding and whatnot, uh, we'll just start at the one inch mark. So we'll measure one inch in. And this at the center will be our bolt hole. Okay. So from that bolt hole, it was an inch and a half until the point where we have to bend the steel to get it out and uh, get right in the middle of those uh, of the opening in the B pillar plastic. So take from that mark, add an inch and a half. This is the point where we're going to bend it. From there, we don't we didn't measure. We don't really have a measurement of how much has to stick out past there, and we'll worry about that part later. So for right now, we'll just add some exit or some excess to it. So we'll give it uh, let's say three inches, an extra three. Now, well, you know what? We'll be you know extra safe here. We'll go an additional four inches of metal poking out through there because remember we can always remove metal. You can't necessarily always put it back on. So let's get our halfway mark here. Half of an inch and a half is three quarters of an inch. So we'll get that center mark there. Now we're gonna go put our hole in and cut this off. All right, so you have to forgive me. It's uh, according to the thermometer above, it's 112 degrees in the shop right now. So my camera decided it didn't wanna you know, cooperate until I let it cool down a little bit. So had to keep on building. So we have the uh, 90 degree bend, which is what we needed to make this extra portion here stick out, which we'll figure out the length of that later. And then we have that additional 30 degree bend to mate up with the, the uh, B pillar, the correct angle of the B pillar. So when it gets in there, this will stick out completely parallel with the floor of the car. So also have our standoffs cut, three quarter inch DOM, three quarter inch length, and they'll go inside here with a half inch standoff from this bracket to the chassis itself needs to be a half an inch. So I already have it set up on this one below. And we'll just put a couple of tack welds on here real quick. So I just gave those a nice little even round over to clean them up a little bit. So now we have two even brackets ready to get installed. I'm gonna to toss them in there for a fit check, see if everything worked out well. So let these cool down real quick, get the car back in here, we'll see how it goes. Now this was planned out before, but I waited until this part of the video to actually show it to you when the brackets are actually installed. Let's go over a couple things about the brackets though. Look really closely, everything fits in there beautifully. It's right where it needs to be. It's got a perfect swing ability without contact to any of the plastic. So the bracket was a great job on that one. Also has the perfect standoff. Doesn't contact anything except for the bolt and the portion of the chassis that it's supposed to at the standoff. So did a great job on these ones. But let's look carefully at this one. What is wrong here? Well, if you actually look, you notice you don't see a bolt anywhere. That becomes a problem. And why does that become a problem? Because once you have all of this together, how are you going to tighten it down? You can't really tighten it down without the plastics being on there, which means that this bracket has to go on before the plastics go back on. So if we were to take this bar and weld it directly to it, we'd never be able to get the B-pillar plastic back on there. We'd never be able to tighten the harness bar back down either. That's a problem. So what do we do? We come up with a solution to it. That's exactly what I'm going to show you here in just a moment. But first we need to measure out and bend up this bar, the actual harness bar itself. So in order to do that, we're taking a bit of masking tape here and mark this off of here. So 
just do a little bit of math here, just a little, little mock-up. What I'm going to do is hold this in place, give myself a little bit of gap between the B-pillar plastic and the end of the tube here. I'm just going to kind of get a rough idea of where I want it here. And then I'm going to take the marker and give a spot at the bottom of the tube. So where the bottom of the tube will meet roughly somewhere on this panel, we'll just make a mark here. Now this is the easy way of bending the tubes. I know that each one of my bends on the inch and a half die gives me roughly eight and a half inches worth of material and whatnot. And of course we can calculate all of this using all the radius and all the rest of the stuff. This is the easy method. So take my tape measure from this mark at this height to my cheater bar, which has the little notch inside of there, which is the beginning of the bend. Take this, stick it right about where I had it before. Look, and I have a distance of eight and a half Pretty inches. Easy, eight and a half inches. So after that, we'll take a measure down here from this uh, spot, this breaking the plastics to this line here, and we've got two and a quarter inches. Now that two and a quarter inches is going to get translated to this side. Right there. like 51 and a half inches. So when we held up our cheater here, and we measured from the line to the beginning of each bend, we got eight and a half inches. Since we have two sides, we double that. Eight and a half times two is 17 inches. Now, the total length is 51 and a half inches. We take 17 inches out of it, which is eight and a half on each side. We know that the center section, there needs to be 34 and a half inches to the start of each bend on each side. So what we'll do is we'll take our 34 and a half, divide that by two, there's the center line, measure outward, make two marks on the tube, bend them both upwards, and then we got our tube. It's gonna fit exactly where we want it to. Don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to do all of that again real quick. Okay, so we're gonna start with the inch and a half 095 wall DOM. That's the tubing that I use for just about everything unless it's chromoly, which in that case, chromoly, we drop down a wall size and go to 065, inch and a half 065 wall chromoly tubing. Those are the only two sizes I use for harness bars. One is lighter than the other one, but they're both just as strong and they're stronger than regular average run of the mill off the shelf tubing. So let's start off, we need to know what our total length of the bar or tubing is gonna be for the harness bar. That includes the bends on each end. I know that each bend from the start to the finish of the bend costs me eight and a half inches of tubing. Let's not get that confused with the eight and a half inches that we measured to get our offset correct for the, uh, the the measurement from the start of the bend to the uh, and beginning of the uh, B pillar that we that we measured earlier. Don't get that confused with the amount of tubing it is. It's just coincidence that they're both the same measurement on this particular build. Okay? So we know that between the beginning of either start of each bend was 34 and a half inches. So if we add eight and a half inches to that, that's just barely enough, and we might not have you know the correct or enough amount uh, one to bend it in the bender and two to actually fit it correctly at the right height and whatnot inside the car. So we need to add some to that. We're going to add, let's say, 12 inches to both end, uh, to each end. So 34 and a half inches plus 12 plus 12 makes 58 and a half inches, the total length of tubing that we need. 58 and a half, it's not like that's really difficult to work with, but we're going to round that up to 60 inches. Just to be on the safe side gives us way more, and it gives us something that we can work with. So let's take off of our main tube here. And don't worry, this will all make sense here in a few minutes. 60 inches. And we'll cut this down. And this is the point where we put it all together, all of those measurements. We're going to take half of this tube, which we cut it at 60 inches, so half of this is 30 inches. This is the center line for our tubing. 34 and a half inches was the total length between the start of each bend on each side. So we need to know what half of that is. Half of 34 and a half inches is 17 and a quarter inches. So from our center line, 17 and a quarter inches on each side. We'll mark that. 17 and a quarter again. We'll mark that. One of these marks is the start 
of the bend. So when we stick it in the bender, we know we knock it right up to here, to this mark, bend it, do the same thing on the other side, and we've got a hard spot. Now we'll load up the bender here real quick. The idea is to get that line pretty much right on. Right on the edge, right at the beginning of that bend. Good reference there. Lock this down. So, crank that down, give this a preload. I'm going to set my dial to zero. And we go 90 degrees. Okay, side A finished up. Let's move on to side B. Set it up just the same as we had the other one. This one's going to take one extra step to make sure that we get it lined up correctly. So one thing you really don't want is a crooked harness bar. And that is when you set it up that one, one leg of it will go this way and the other one will be bent that way. They're both offset. You want to try to avoid that at all costs. So we're going to measure out our die here. It's on zero. This is already with a little bit of a preload. We'll measure up this leg here, make sure that it also says zero, which it does. And we'll crank it down. Tighten it. Reload that. Set my dial on zero, and we'll give this one another 90 degrees. All right, we've got our harness bar kind of loosely mounted up here. You can see the clamps and uh, whatnot system I've got to set up here. Just kind of eyeballed this in place because we need to find out how much we need to cut off of here in order to get the correct angle for the harness bar. Now, most uh, rules in just about every uh, division, they specify anywhere between zero to 25 degrees is usually what I find. So personally, I like to set it up to make sure that it follows just about every rule and uh, you go no more than five degrees. So I've just got a piece of flat stock on my protractor here. Throw it somewhere in the middle of here. Just kind of eyeball that in there. Clamp it down, look at it. it. Looks like we've got six degrees. So by the time we get it trimmed off, we should have it pretty close here. Should get it right at the five degree mark. So set this up here. Now I'm only gonna mark off one side and measure this from the top down because both sides are even. So we measure this from the top down and we make sure that that cut is going to be identical on both sides so we don't have a lopsided harness bar. This is where we get to one of my favorite parts of the job and that is engineering solutions. Remember before where we had uh, the problem with uh, we can't take the plastics on or off if the harness bar and the bracket are welded together and I said we have to have a solution for that? Here's the solution. This is a nut welded on the back of a disc. Okay. Now you can cut your own discs or use probably washers or something. Just make sure it's, a, it's quite thick and it uh, has the same structural properties of the tube that you're actually welding to. Otherwise, it's, it's the weak link and kind of defeats the purpose of making a safety device. So, I'm just going to take that, nicely weld it to the top of here with a good solid weld, and then we'll have a mount. Now we have a mount here. I have the bolt going in and it's uh, attached to a washer which is just kind of pinching on this bracket to hold it in place. And the purpose of that was to measure the distance between the bar and the plastic to make sure it's the same on both sides. Now you got to be really careful and delicate when you do this because it could slip off and fall at any time damaging anything. So what I did was make a face line on the top of each tube and this face line gets translated onto the bracket which would be right about here. And what we're going to do is take the brackets out, flip them over, pop a hole in each one of them, and then we can mount up the harness bar. Alright, so this is where we start the most arguments. The supports and the, the setup of the harness bar. Now a lot of us have seen that picture online where that, that car that was wrecked, you know, the harness bar was basically bent inside out and backwards and uh, it was kind of nasty looking. Now the probability of that being a very low quality bar is extremely high. 
Okay, it, it took the design and mimicked a lot of the shape of all of the low quality knockoff, you know, universal harness bar types or whatever the case is. So that's one problem. The second problem is it might have not been set up correctly. Now setup is extremely important to a harness bar. The idea is to give it as much tilt or as much tilt as you can to allow these legs or the more vertical sections of it uh, take the load or absorb the load as opposed to the bar itself because any bar would be willing to bend one way or the other and you know that's kind of what they're, what they're capable of doing but a lot of them don't like to compress and the idea is to get as much of that force under when if you unfortunately make too much of a load on it the idea is to get as much of that force to be absorbed in this section of the bar not this section of the bar now the other portion of it is the legs or the stand or the supports that come down to hold the bar in place those also have to absorb a load that's really important as well to consider the design of those if they are on the side which are common in a lot of uh, universal designs uh, coming down the side here there is no support for the middle of it so if your load is even here the bar is going to want to bend itself in half when it's being pulled on by the harnesses because all of the support is over here all of my bars i try to make a design incorporate the design where the where the support is in the center of it so that way we have support here support here this section of bar is less likely to bend than the entire section of bar so when I get to uh, doing these uh, support legs, which is going to be right now, uh, we're going to try and send them right down to the center of here, and I'm going to build it to a bracket that goes right down underneath the seat, and it's going to mount to the point where the seat mounts. That's the safest and strongest place for it. So another thing, this doesn't need a whole lot of explanation, but these are the lower mounts for the leg supports, and uh, it's just a piece of flat stock and a tab welded onto it, and it's going to go down here at the bottom of the seats. Very simple installation, very simple mounting solution. So outside support, center support, that means the harness bar is going to be as strong as it possibly can be once it's all complete and installed. So remember, if there's two passengers, there's two loads. So we need one bar on the side here, one bar on this side here, and we're going to go right down to the point where they've mounted the seats. So. To get that measurement, I'm going to measure from the bolt hole to the bar itself, and it looks like we've got 30 inches. So we measure from the center of the bolt to the flange, and we come up with uh, it's like an inch and a half. We have plenty of room to adjust, so 30 inches minus an inch and a half off of each side makes 27 inches. So that's the length of the uh, support leg that we're going to have to cut for it. So let's go do that real quick. Support legs, we're going to use three quarter inch OD tubing. Cut that at 27 inches. Alright, so we're going to get the legs fitted up here. And what we're going to do is weld in a tube end to one side and to the other side so that they're both threaded and adjustable. Now, for the purpose of mocking up and setting all of this up to make sure that we've got the correct measurement and, and adjustability, we're only going to weld and tack on one side right now. We're going to leave the other side open because the two bends will slip into it and we'll be able to set everything up for mock up correctly. That way if we need to cut down the tube again later, we can do that without having to waste a two bend every single time. So we'll just get this one side mounted up. Alright, so we got the first side measured up, and we got the second side mocked up in place. So we'll take a quick measure of this to get the tabs even. Looks like 18 and a half inches to the first tab from the plastics. And we'll do the same over here. 18 and a half. Right about there. So I've already measured these out, make sure they're the same length, and of course the brackets are the same, so Drop a tack weld on these. All righty, time for the final piece to finish this one off. We're gonna put in a couple of belt stays on here. This is nothing more than 5 16 uh, 
round stock which is bent up accordingly and of course measured out to to fit where the harnesses are gonna fit so let's kind of set this in place I'll give it a couple of tack welds and then make sure that it's in line with the other one I've already have welded in Looks pretty good. Well, that about finishes off just about everything on this. I'm going to give this a final welds on here, get it cleaned up, and send it out for coating. And as soon as that's done, we'll put it all back together and enjoy the uh, sweet looks and functions of a custom-built harness bar. Well, there you have it. Got it back from coating. It's matched to the exterior, a silver 10 series color. I think it looks really nice in this interior. Pops very hard against it, against the black. Very clean, very custom, very nice now you have a chance to make one yourself so i really hope this video serves you well i'm going to pop the harnesses back on here give the customer a call let them know it's ready for pickup but in the meantime thanks for watching this episode of the fabricator and we'll see you all on the next project